Uh, hello people out there, this is Michael Tune House Jews, and this is uh, High Power in the Chamber of Secrets playthrough. Part, like, three. Yeah. Alright, so, first thing off in this challenge, if you hit these suits of armor on the walls here, they will spit out a bunch of beans. Well, not a bunch of beans, but you can hit them a number of times. Um, so, yeah. That's very exciting, not really. Okay, phasing through the wall again. An unpleasant greenish substance left behind by certain ghostly beings. You can make w what you will of that. I'm not going to say anything about that. Anyway. <clears throat> uh. Hmm. Alright, clearly I'm sorry, but that's kind of like obvious. So anyway, you can see here, you can hit this uh, thing with pen as many times as you want, but if there's something greenish and slimy behind it, then nothing good is going to happen. So, uh, yeah, you can use your common sense and figure out how you want to take care of that problem. And hit the block over it. You know what? That's better. I think it got stuck because I was just nailing it with the pen so many times when it wouldn't, wasn't moving forward. Anyway, uh, what's the card down there? Um, let's see, although it is, um, pushed out a little bit farther than usual, so that does make it easier to jump across, because normally you need, like, you need a time to jump perfectly if you want to make it across without falling. Anyway, this stuff here, um, yeah, this is just, like, there to be annoying, and stuff, and, yes, um, that, that's very good. General something fault? I can't read it in this uh, low quality movie maker thing. Anyway, time skipping ahead. I hope you all liked my desktop wall. What well, used to be my desktop, I've got a giant made across it now and yeah. Uh, let's go with that. So these fire crabs are like just there to be annoying and take up space, I guess, because there's nothing you can do with them. Uh, this room here, and... Is anyone else hearing a bit of audio lag? Anyway, uh... <clears throat> that's, um... That's very nice. Uh, so yeah, Peeves, he's a whole kind of... Kind of more difficult to battle. He's a little harder to hit in this game than he was in Sorcerer's Stone, but uh, I kind of like it better that way because that's kind of more like I thought Peeves would be if you had to fight him. This is really require Peeves battle in the game. There are a few places where he will jump out of a treasure chest at you. One of them being in this challenge. Um, aside from that, uh, if you let him get too near you and not uh, hit him with scourge, then he will shoot what I believe to be a jet of ectoplasm out of his finger. It's kind of weird. Um, and yeah, that's Peeves. So, we, yeah, as you can see, you need to hit Flipendo to do that, to unblock that door, but in return, it will block um, another door that you need to progress forward. So, there's a bit of Running around kind of in circles around this area right here. Uh, I did see um in a speed run, I don't know if it was it's the current fastest speed run for this game, that somebody was able to skip this next section entirely by somehow um running around and 
jumping so exactly that they're able to like knock away they're able to hit the flippy thing once up above and then come down and hit it again before while it was still moving before it closed on the doorway above and then they were able to um get out again through the original opening before it it's confusing, you'll have to watch a walkthrough of it. Anyway. But, all in all, I would suggest that you don't do that, because there are challenge stars and stuff to find, I think. Actually, no, I don't believe there are, and, like, stuff to explore, and that's usually good. So! Um, wow, way to have a jump right over your head. Uh... <clears throat> Down here, this kind of introduces a new type of trap for these um, orange snails. I don't believe there are any for fire crabs. Um, right, come on, chase me faster than that. Because I don't feel like using Flipenta. Okay, fine. Um, these traps over here, they are not like the usual ones that will just stay down. Um, you have to knock the fire crab or snail into it and like... They will stay there. These, you don't knock them into anything, you just like have them stand, um, sit over a tile on the floor and it activates a button. And after you do that, the things can come back and get you, which is really kind of a problem if you're not paying attention. So there, um, I, ah, I forgot to really talk faster. If you saw the uh, tile on the ceiling, that's um, kind of a speedrunning tactic for this uh, level. You don't need to jump down and activate these tiles yourself and use a snail for the other one. You can get another snail from the ceiling and use that. Uh, why am I trying to describe that? That was just, that was just shown in the video. Come on, self. Use your head. Think with your head. Anyway, two whole beans in there. That's useful, I guess. After all, 200 beans sounds like 150 treasure chests is still 300 beans. Anyway, um, yeah. These chests here, I don't know if I, you, any, uh, if I saw any of those other ones, they will, they're kind of weird, they'll only spit out a few beans every time, but you can use Alhamar on them like three or four times. <clears throat> so anyway, um, this pixie thing here is kind of, uh, the side of a glitch in future, when you come through this challenge again in the future. That cutscene will play every single time you come through this challenge, unlike the, um, unlike the other ones that will only play the first time you see the enemy. Uh, that does count as, that does qualify as a glitch. Um, here's another one of those chests. It's like you're gonna talk a mile a minute. And faster sometimes, and then the rest of the time I've got nothing to say. I should I should prepare before doing this. Anyway, here you can uh, clean up the scourge stuff before. Um, you can clean up the scourge stuff while you're standing on the ledge over here, but that makes it kind of annoying to jump on if you're not very good with your control and stuff like that. And you will spend a lot of time dying, and the last save point's kind of far away, so. It's much easier to just do this. I don't know if that was intentional or not. And then I don't know if you have to actually hit that button on the side. I don't know if it if the, um, the gorge is short enough to just jump across. Um, yeah. So anyway, here. Uh, you've got to go up there to go forward in the next challenge star. And pretty much the end of this uh, section of the game, too. But, you can, it is possible to balance the thing perfectly and then jump across, but usually your weight will make it fall down and so that you can't jump across, so you have to come over here. I like how in this particular challenge, kind of in the other, in the other ones, um, not as much I don't think, there are a lot of simple puzzles that you have to, like, solve and do a bunch of things to get through. And eventually, you. But in the. Uh, I still can't talk. And by the end of the challenge, you will kind of be spending a lot of time running around in circles. 
I kind of like that. I wish they did that with those. Oh, hey! Finally got ten of those uh, card thingies. Uh, hear, if you hear any weird noises, that's because I'm still wearing those fingers I mentioned in the last time. Uh, so yeah, now Harry has two um, bars of HP. Lightning rod things. And, yeah. Harry grew to level 2. Anyway. So many random beans here. I really should not have been wasting so much time just getting every single bean in every single map in this game. It's kind of... It is a waste of time. <clears throat> anyway, here, um... This block, when you hit it down there, it, apparently it weighs enough so that if you stand on the side, you will not make the seesaw thing fall down. So I guess that block is bigger than Harry. Kind of, I could, I could see that. And um, random snail there. You can jump on that thing on the block when you push it down, or you cannot. It kind of saves time if you right before the cutscene activates if you jump on the block and follow it down so that oh yeah it's peace uh... you don't have to wait out the cutscene and then go either jump down or run all the way down the stairs it's because if you jump down that thing through that hole in the ceiling you will lose some HP anyway wow that was a little strange that's um... that's very nice Anyway, so, uh, after time skipping out the s speed run, high score run, thing run of that challenge, or not, rather, that was the time skip thing, it's time to go to the uh, next house point ceremony. So, I did go and, uh, what am I doing down here? Forgetting where I'm supposed to be going. I should know where I'm supposed to be going. I've done this for 10 years. I did go and speed up the um, bean bonus room. It's like, by quite a bit. So, yeah. And yet again, I'm almost twice as many house points as Slytherin. Come on, game designers. Too many points. Jeez. Oops. That never happened. Oh, 
Anyway, <clears throat> the one bathroom in the entire Hogwarts school, and it's the size of the Great Hall. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, I hear Brian coming home. What were they going to say? Oh yes, I did not accidentally mash the debug speed up button in the last bit of beam bonus room and accidentally make that skip the in half the cutscene. Anyway... Yeah, even I, I think that was four times speed, the, um, I was watching the, uh, timer at the bottom for almost the entire time, and I was, like, still just crawling. Anyway, speaking of glitches, like I mentioned in the, um, the challenge thing, this is another one, that's, there's that random shadow on the floor, it looks like it's supposed to belong to a Cornish pixie, but if you look up, there's nothing there. <clears throat> um... I don't know why that is, and I probably shouldn't have jumped that far, but who cares. Uh, yeah. I should have just cut out that entire bean bonus thing entirely. <sighs> so anyway, that um, Lumos Gargoyle over there was not necessary, but it kind of does make it a little bit easier to see the cracks in these stairs. I find that even if you don't have it illuminated, you can still see which stairs are real and which ones are not real, and it'll make you fall to your death. <clears throat> and, um, that's just me, so. Yeah. Fun stuff with the polluted green water. Tell me, Harry, how bad does it smell? Okay, I'll, that's enough. Um, hmm, it looks like there should be something hidden behind there, but I guess there's not. There's already this, there's like... With that thing in the wall there, in that chest, right, that I just opened, there's like two wizard cards within like ten feet of each other. Uh, nice job spreading them evenly through the game. <clears throat> anyway, if there's one annoying part of this, um, of this section of the game, it's known as, um, Snape's Dungeons, or just the Dungeons, it could be here. Um, the most annoying part of this area thing. Uh, this area isn't that bad, except for I guess this and something else if you're not good at platforming. Uh, here, mostly because there's... I find it's annoying maneuvering these fire crabs around all these, like, metal bars and stuff. So, this is... I just don't really like this part, but that's just me. Uh, Alright, the random stuff that I end up talking about to fill space in commentary. Anyway, I did not know this until recently, you actually can go and follow these guys into the traps here. And I like how they immediately wake up when a cutscene when any cutscene plays. Uh So yeah, there are a few it's nothing really interesting in there, just some potion ingredients and whatnot. Anyway, uh come on. Over here, uh I don't know if this counts as a secret if you're looking to find every single secret in the game. This area over here, it's only three beans and stuff, and it kind of is a shortcut for this level, I think, because you're supposed to go and use Scourge and that'll expose some stairs that will let you walk down here, but you can also just jump down with a Lumos platform. Anyway, something else I did not know until recently. These snails that are down here are the ones that were up in the room above where the fire crabs are now. And when you hit them both into the trap, the bottom of it just opened, or... No, rather, it, they weighed, um... They weighed a pulley down and brought the fire crabs up and came down here. So, pretty interesting video game pseudo-physics stuff. Anyway, another wizard card. Alright, I saw Potato Head. Come on, you.
You want Brian? Oh, no. Hello, Brian. Hello. I'm Holly. Anyway. And another wizard card. There's a lot of wizard cards in this um, in this section of the game. I guess in this entire game, really, there's 101 wizard cards to find. Anyway, uh, over here, this is kind of fun. You uh, just be nice and super nice to animals and push a snail down over the cliff and kill it. Whoa! Peter just disappeared. Very funny. Okay, he's not supposed to do that. I don't know why. I've seen that happen a couple times, but I don't know why. Anyway, these buttons. There are four places you can go. One is the way out. Um, the other three have treasure chests with stuff in it. Um, it's not possible to get to arrange these walls so that you can get all four at once. You have to make multiple trips down there. I think you have to make at least two, usually three, but I don't know. Um, I will find a way to get them all. You just have to... Really, you just have to hit these switches until you find a way. Um, each switch is only on or off for these walls, so... If you want to just take random guesses at combinations, there's only 16 possible ones. I like how Howard just somehow hit an invisible wall and stopped moving. Uh, anyway. So yeah, a couple beans and I think, yeah, potion ingredients. Um... Alright. <clears throat> I'm still hearing a little bit of um, audio being desynced and stuff. That's weird. Oh, more potion ingredient stuff. So yeah, um, the normal way to get down here is to take these elevators on the side. One goes up, one goes down, and jump across. But it is also possible to just stay up there and jump across, although you will lose some health. But that's really not a problem, because there are so many opportunities to heal with potions and frogs even and stuff. And yay, elevator jumps there, it's not a problem. So anyway, um, doing a little bit of time skip and uh, um, opening up the last two places. No, only one of them. Uh, cause that, yeah, that door there is covered up. And what's here? <clears throat> I think this is both, um, Flogworm and Wigan Tree. As potion ingredients, yeah. So yeah. Uh, now, forward, really forward is the easiest way to find, cause you only have, the only thing you have to do is make the, um, the walls follow the carpet down there. Uh, I don't know. And yay, fun with the camera. I think this is um, technically supposed to be Snape's storage room, but this is one of the few actual areas in this map that looks like it could be a storage room. It's kind of weird. I like... Sna Snape has to go through, like, this giant obstacle course if he wants to get to his potion stores, and when he gets there, it's only a moderate supply of vials and books and stuff like that. I don't know. Video game logic. It's not nearly as bad as Nintendo. You can knock that guy off into the water, but I feel extra humane today. So... This is the other part of the, um, this area that I said could be kind of annoying if you're not that great at platforming. What you have to do is, um, alright, get the tracer to show up on the green stuff, and then that will make these spinny things start moving, and you can start platforming your way around, and if you're A, not good, or if you're B, in a hurry like I am, you're going to die numerous times, and yeah, that's not good. Um, yeah. This place gave me nightmares when I was little. Anyway. Come on, stop being silly and stop dying and stuff like that. Fun with platforms. Should 
Come on, a little faster than that. Oh, that looks good. Oh, come oh, pfft. Really? Really? I always wondered what those ledges down at the side were for, and... I used to think there's like a treasure chest or something down here, but no, it's for if you fall and do this, then you have a way to probably get back up, but I think it's kind of useless because it's usually, it's pretty difficult to actually climb back up these, and you don't really fall down in a way that you will be able to climb back up anyway, and then, yeah, you can die like that. Suppose I could have hit the delete key and gone ghost mode and zoom all over the place. Alright, come on, don't die this time, you hear me, Harry? Whoa, lucky. Come on, get over here. Oh, the fun the camera can have with these if you're standing right next to a wall. Alright, that's better. So, <clears throat> um, I like the off how is going to torture you by going almost all the way around, but then stopping when it's right out of your reach, and then, alright, now we'll come back around and can jump over. Yeah, thank you, game designers. I'm wasting my time. And opening doors and saving the game at the same time. Yeah, it's fun when that happens. Anyway, here, another um, card thing. So, yeah. It's quite a few. So, here. Um, <clears throat> here, you remember how Peeves, uh, hit, I hit him with Penda once and he just disappeared randomly into the ground? Well, I've seen that happen here a few times, too. I've called it the, um, the exploding gnome. I've called it the Exploding Gnome Glitch. I don't know if anyone else has seen that. I don't know why it happens, like... Maybe if you do too many things at once in the game, misfires a few ones and zeros. Anyway, um, here, another gnome. And you can take him and throw him back into his hole. I like the way it sounds like he's crashing through and demolishing all of his plumbing networks when you he, when he throw him to the gnome hole. It's kind of funny. Uh, oh, well... Don't you have some good range down there, Mr. Firecraft? Thanks for showing it off. Uh, I don't know that they can even the firecrafts can even detect you when you're that far away. Anyway, another secret area. Uh, another secret area. Uh, yeah, that Lumos thing, and yeah, stuff. Fun. Okay. Uh, are there like three pixies in there? I never, I never figure out how many pixies are in there. I think there's three or four. Cause I would always just like spam off a few decembers and knock them all out, and I wouldn't really even bother to count how many are in there. Anyway, here. Oh no, it's a the oldest trap in the world. The like the tiger trap style thing, except instead of digging a hole and covering it with sticks and stuff, you're just putting a weak spot in the floor, and yeah. Harry definitely should have broken a few limbs when he fell down there. But this is video games. Again. So here's the horn that you came for, but uh, you can also go back there and grab yourself a few beans. As if a few beans is gonna matter anyway. I've been through that already, come on now. So anyway. Uh, when you're done, just. Yeah, you'll end up in Snake's, in Snape's classroom and you can get yourself a treasure chest with stuff in it, and... Yeah. Some random stuff hidden around safe class that I never bother coming back to get. If you try and get them during the lesson, he'll call you back and tell you where you're going, get back here and finish the lesson, and stuff like that. <sighs> Ow. Oh yes, that's what happens when you walk through the green stuff. <clears throat> Who wants to bet that there's another wizard card in there? If you don't already know the answer. Yeah, of course there is. Or one of these days, yeah. See, I was going to say, one of these days I was going to get ten silver cards, and when you do that, that happens. And you do get a key to unlock that um that extra challenge that Neural Headless Snake was talking about. By the way, if you miss some cards in places like the um dungeons and and uh 
like the place the hire just was that you can't go back to and get some wizard cards and some other students around the school will sell them to you. Alright, Hermione. So, right? 